interpreting equality clause because the interpretation was more influenced by american jurisprudence of liberty american jurisprudence of giving more emphasis to liberty or freedom and that's why the larger goal of common man was ignored while interpreting equality clause so that's why it is important to understand that the those who are sitting on the bench their background really matter when they decide the case when they decide the issue at hand adding one more instance to it in the famous case of government of andhra pradesh versus vijaya kumar wherein the case was related to the validity of reservation for women in a public employment a that then judge justice sujata manohar validated reservation for women in public employment under article 15 clause 3 as it is a gathering of legal luminary i need not elaborate upon it that article 15 speaks about all other state activities except public employment so when when we talk about reservation in public employment it is only article 16 which guides the legislature to provide for reservation one can very well infer this that that judgment had come because of the fact that there was a lady just sitting on the bench had lady just not been there it would have been very difficult to imagine that the court validating reservation for women by taking 15 clause 3 into account so it certainly reflects that background matters and it is just there is no denial of the fact that justice sujata manohar being a woman understood the need of women empowerment and hence the validated reservation for women under article 15 clause 3 so these are some instances which establishes the fact that why we should have representative judiciary why we should have reflective judiciary then there can be another added argument that how do you reconcile merit and representation because the moment you say representation somewhere you negotiate with merit. i am of the view that merit is not a luxury when you talk about the appointment of judges in the higher judiciary merit is constitutional requirement so in no case merit should be ignored but adding to it it is important also to understand that merit itself is a qualified expression you cannot have any objective definition of merit and if it is qualified expression it is pos- it is not possible to have any absolute content what merit means it's a mandatory it's mandatory so mer- merit is not non negotiable and that's why the governing factor of merit is not constant and changes with requirement and it changes with requirement of time and place and in the i believe that the chairwoman who will be who will be finish no, first guiding me for that i think i should we should leave that role for the chairwoman to do that. sorry alone has not been criteria always and as it has been pointed by numerous law commission reports along with merit regional representation was always the criteria that so that supreme court should be manned by people from all the regions so let's not forget that regional representation has always been the criteria along with merit so when regional representation can be a criteria i believe there is nothing wrong in advancing the argument to make our judiciary more representative and more reflective on the basis of social pat- pattern so but at the same time i must clarify here that after the appointment to the bench judges are expected to be completely independent and to express no overt bias towards the sectors of the society from which they originate or effect so they need there must be a representative judiciary but they should not remain representative of the group or the you know the sector to which they represent so they need to you know detach themselves when they are involved in in a judicial exercise and interesting this and interestingly if i have to make an observation when you talk about merit appointment of a senior most judge as a chief justice of india itself is a dilution of merit if i can take liberty of saying so coming to the conclusion the obligation of advancing social goals requires a democratic judicial institution based completely on merit 
so that independence of judiciary can be cemented with faith and trust of people. The court is a tribute of the makers of the constitution and in salutation of creation of such an institution, collegium must walk a step ahead or to make the judiciary a completely meritorious and truly democratic representative institution. To conclude, if independence of judiciary is a basic structure of the Indian constitution, then the need of reflective judiciary is essential to keep that basic structure intact. Thank you. Thank you for your Our next speaker, Mr. Rajiv Pandey, Advocate, Bombay High Court. First, I would like to bring back this session to the topic of judicial reforms in developing countries. Except Mr. Prabhakaran, uh, who is a distinguished leader of lawyers in Tamil Nadu, I think this session has gone to somewhere else. The reason is, what is judicial reform and what we are discussing? It's about the developing country. Who are the developing countries? I think India is a true picture of developing countries, like in Africa, China, but China we can't mention because China is a, what kind of country I am unable to say. It's a, there is no democracy, so only where judicial reform can be talked about a country, who is a democratic country. So in India, many people have talked about the judicial reform and some steps have been also taken. In the last decade, after 2001, I think the biggest judicial reform in India has been taken by no lawyer, no judge. It is taken by one Mr. Anna Hajare, he may be 10th fail, I don't know, that Right to Information Act was introduced by him in Maharashtra and later on central government has taken over that act in 2004 no doubt after diluting the main main teeth of the act so that is done by the central government why we require judicial reform first what is judicial reform in my submission in my understanding judicial reform is required to affirm the democracy in the country if there is no judicial reform, like we have seen in our neighborhood, that is Pakistan, judiciary has forced the government, the military dictators, that you have to come back. Dictatorship will, won't work. What judiciary has contributed in India, that we have seen in 1975-1977. But now, today, why we all are talking about the judicial reform? The reason behind is this that people have started feeling that we are unable to get the justice in the existing system. The biggest reason for that, in my opinion, we are always counting in every uh, report what is per capita income, what is uh, population and all these things. But what is per capita judge? So until we improve per capita judge, there cannot be any judicial reform. That is the basic thing. Because if per capita judge has gone up, then certainly the disposal of cases will be more. So that is the basic things. In my submission that first we have to improve per capita judge. Then second thing we have to see the cost of the litigation. <coughs> cost of the litigation has gone so high that a common man cannot even think about the approaching court. So after this judicial reform, we have to make, government should be accountable that if a person is not in a position to afford the legal cost, he has to be provided the state lawyers and lawyers should be paid by the state. The third most important that any corruption and all these things you, uh, you see very well in every newspaper, all judges and all these things, I don't want to comment. It comes from the origin. So we have to hit where is the origin, what is the appointment. Whatever, whatever is the appointment at lower judiciary, at least nobody can question that there is an entrance exam, there is an interview conducted and then uh, uh, lower judiciary people are appointed. What about the higher judiciary? Before 93, at my learned friend Mr. Prabhakaran had said there was a system in government, uh, this ministry was recommending and then it was happening. Thereafter, apology is there. If really we want to strengthen our democracy by judicial reform, then we have to democratize all institutions. 
In India, there are four pillars of the constitution. One is press. I have seen a laborer's son is also a very good press reporter and a big press reporter. I have seen executive that a person who is a rickshaw puller in last exam only, he has become IS officer. Then you see in technocrat, in IIT exams, you, have, you would have heard about the Super 13 in Bihar, all are rickshaw puller, cobblers, some are uh, becoming uh, IIT, IITs. Then to, uh, executive also, whatever is the corruption I uh, accept in the uh, a member of parliament, among member of parliament and member of legislative assembly, but democratization is there. Even a poor person can become MLA and MP, then why not about judiciary, higher judiciary? The main reason is that this is the monopolizing uh, the things, that only few people, few relatives, few things, a complete transparency and even the lowest rug of person should be allowed to participate in this. Many times we have seen, if a person is not speaking good English, he can become a very good judge. He can become a very good democrat. He can become a very good IS officer. We have seen this. So, but in their case, we have, I am from Bombay uh, High Court Bar Association. We see how things are happening. In my, I, I, I wish to say that lawyers should come forward and raise this issue. My last is this, which is about the, not about the judicial reform. This is helping about the, some new acts. Some new act in legislation has been done by the central government in view of the judicial reform, like Arbitration and Conciliation Act. You see, this act is so erroneous, so oppressive. If suppose I am a small contractor and working with ONGC, if there is a dispute, there will be arbitration clause. In that it will be written. One retired chief just uh, retired judge of the Supreme Court can only become arbitrator. So I invoke arbitration clause. I appoint Mr. A who is ready to work for 1,000 rupees per hearing. When you see a form a judge who is saying Ki, I read brief reading charge of 1 lakh rupees, then I read I need 1 lakh rupees per hearing. Then even my appointed arbitrator on the basis of parity, there are three arbitrators, it becomes 3 lakhs per hearing. So when you see if he wants to kill me, he will keep on adjourning the matter and I will say it is better that I am withdrawing my reference. So the arbitration act is so erroneous that for the court, for the approaching high court and supreme court, you have court fees act. But for arbitrators, you are giving them power to judge their own fees. So these kinds, some good, I have just mentioned about the RTI, it is a good legislation. Of course, not as good as Maharashtra Right to Information Act. But at least there is a right of information, we can ask something. These kind of acts which are coming in force, we have to see very well that where it is going. If suppose a person is having dispute with Tata, can you manage the litigation cost? So what kind of uh, this arbitration clause can be put where? If it is between Ambani brothers, it's all right. But if it is between a common man and Ambani brothers, then it's already lost. <laughs> And there are, there, they said that we want that it will be decided at arbitration. Then there is a 34 appeal. Then there is a division bench appeal. And then there is a SLP. Then where is the question? Then it is better at least our courts are getting money by way of court fees. It is better. Then you appoint more judges. I have written an article also uh, some time back. That these all tribunals and all, you appoint more judges may in the place of 25 high court judges make 50 courts make 100 courts in one, uh, one state. So I think for judicial reform, with accountability, number of courts and the appointment procedure can really start the judicial reform. I don't know where it will go. And then the acts which are really just and fair, that should be done, not like arbitration act and other things. And if arbitration act is there, there should be a cap of fees like uh, court fees act. Now, what is uh, uh, in my conclusion? I, I wish to say what is what 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 we have to do for judicial reform. In my opinion, there is a 